Alright, so it's the weekend again, and as you may already know, I tried to cook one recipe every week. While scheming on what to make, pizza kept coming up. Now I've already done pizza from scratch in the past in my previous video and I thought maybe I could do a little repeat. So I went into the grocery stores for inspiration and I went into the aisle with pre-made pizzas and I ran into Hot Pockets. And that's when I realized Hot Pockets are calzones. Now if you're not familiar with a Hot Pocket, essentially it's just a pie with pizza ingredients in them. And I thought it's a worthy enough challenge to do something this week that had something to do with pizza. So there you go. This week I will be doing calzones. Here we go again. We begin by the usual gathering of the ingredients. I was debating here whether I should use my double O semolina flour, but I opted to use what's left of the all-purpose flour and maybe save the semolina flour for when I make pizza again. The project almost broke when I realized I only had one packet of yeast left. Luckily, it was enough for the recipe and I soldiered on. I'm using a different kind of apron from what I used in the past. Black on black just didn't seem to fit at the time. Start with a packet of yeast and 3 fourths cup of warm water. Stir it up well so it becomes somewhat of a paste. Add 2 cups of flour and set a little on the side to line your surface in preparation for the kneading process. Add 1 tablespoon of salt to the mixture. And then we mix. Line your surface with the flour you set aside a while ago and then begin the kneading process. As a rule, I try to knead at least 10 minutes to a minimum, making consistent pressure and alternating crisscross and double palm technique. Line your bowl with olive oil so that the dough doesn't stick to the bottom. It's always important for you to keep a clean working surface. Get into the habit of doing this and it will make things much more neat and organized to enjoy the cooking process. Let your dough rest for an hour. While waiting for the dough to rest, let's start working on the filling. Always use a horning knife before using your knife. I find that putting a wet rag under a chopping board helps it become more stable. Cutting an onion has its pros and cons. Best technique is to keep the root of the onion intact and cut around it. Here, you see me cutting the root last as I work around the onion. First making 6 horizontal cuts along the bulb, then one across as I proceed to chop. Add 3 sausage links or any equivalent. And of course pepper and salt to taste. Copper pants are amazing. I have had this one for years and it has yet to show its age. You don't have to cook the filling thoroughly, but if you are planning to eat the leftovers later, please saute them a little bit more. It's about time for the dough to finish resting. Flour up your surface and get your dough cutter and dough roller to start the flattening process. Use your dough cutter to separate your dough into four equal parts. In an attempt to make the dough as even as I can, first I round the separated dough parts so that when I flatten it, it will become even. Do 
Use your palms to flatten the ball and use your rolling pin to spread the dough. Remember, you have to have enough space for the filling, two slices of ham, pepperoni, and the mozzarella. The recipe calls for marinara sauce, but it's still the height of the corona outbreak out there and all I could find was some basil sauce. I figured it would be okay. Put the ham in first and then the sausage link filling and the pepperoni and then top it off with the mozzarella cheese on top. Beat an egg and a dash of salt and use this to seal up your dough as you close the left flap over the right flap of the dough. Twist the edges so that the insides don't spill out when they cook and make sure you add holes on the surface as well or a little X to help the steam come out. Line a pan with parchment paper and evenly disperse the calzones inside of it. Use what's left of the egg to batter up the top of the calzone to give it more color. Set your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit and when it's ready, put the calzones on the top rack. Set your timer for 20 minutes. Once it's done, put the calzones in a cooling rack as it will be piping hot. Alright, so about three hours later, this is the finished product. Alright guys, now it's time for the taste test. Here's the cause zone. Pretty good. And you know what? I had a little leftover uh, basil sauce there. I could use that to dip the calzone. Made a little bit moist. I 
have to say, I am really pleased with how this console turned out. Oh man, I am really full. I am really satisfied with how that calzone turned out. I had really good fun making calzone. Thanks for watching that video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys on my next cooking project.